this is Peter from the DJ Podcast. In this video, we'll be looking at how to MIDI map controls inside of Ableton Live. Once you have your MIDI controller set up in the preferences, you can start MIDI mapping by going over to this button on the top right of the program that says MIDI. Simply click on the button and you'll see that a bunch of the different options in the software turn blue. All of the functions that are highlighted in blue are MIDI mappable. That means that you can assign them to a control on your MIDI controller. You've also noticed that we have a new pane on the left and that is for MIDI mappings. This is where all of the different MIDI mappings will be stored and you'll be able to customize some of the MIDI mappings depending on what function you're trying to map. So if I want to map a button, for example, this play button here, I simply have to click on the button and then you'll see the little brackets appear around the control. Then I have to press a button on my MIDI controller. You'll see that now next to the button, it says which MIDI channel and what MIDI note is assigned and it shows it directly on the button itself. You'll also see that the MIDI mapping pane has a new entry and that is for the MIDI control that I just assigned. Now a simple button doesn't have a lot of options, but if you are trying to map something like a fader, you get some additional options. So I'll go and I'll click on this line fader here, then I'm just going to move a control on my MIDI controller. Once again, we have a new entry in the MIDI mappings pane, but this time we have a minimum and maximum value. Right now the minimum is set to infinity dB and the maximum is set to 6 dB. If I'm doing a DJ mix, I probably don't want to push the volume past zero decibels. Now, of course, I could just watch how far I turn the knob on the controller, but Ableton Live allows me to edit that maximum value so I don't have to worry about accidentally turning the volume up too high. So if I want to change this maximum value, I can simply click on it, then enter in zero. Now you'll see that the maximum is zero dB. If I go and exit out of MIDI mode, which I can do again by just pressing the MIDI button, now when I turn this knob, you'll see that if I turn it all the way to the left, it's at minus infinity like before. If I turn it to the right, you'll see that I can only go up to zero dB. Having the ability to easily set a minimum and maximum value is great because by setting a maximum value on something like a fader or an EQ, you can prevent yourself from overloading the signal and having it distort. Now, of course, you can minimap more than just the standard controls that you find on channels. You can also map just about anything. So if I go and add an effect, like a auto filter, for example, I'll just drop it onto a channel. Then I can go back to mini mode and you'll see that all of the effect controls are also assignable. So if I want to assign something like the frequency, I can also do so. Get out of mini map mode. And now you can see I can adjust the frequency on this filter. Almost all of Ableton Live's functions can be mini mapped. So you should take some time to create your own custom mini mappings for your controller and your specific style of DJing. If you'd like to stay up to date with the DJ Podcast, subscribe on YouTube or follow us on Twitter or Facebook. And don't forget to visit the DJPodcast.com for more video tutorials to improve your DJ mixes.